All right. Hey guys, welcome to tonight's stream. We have yet another unboxing tonight of this handy dandy tool in front of me. Um, the Frozen and Madworks uh, Sonic Saber. So this tool is geared towards working with resin. Specifically, if you go check out the website, um, like say if you have two pieces that don't quite fit together, you can use this thing to trim down the resin very quickly and very easily. So kind of think of those vibration saws and sanders that we see out there. Think of it, this is more of a, uh, how do I want to call it? This is more of an exacto knife version. So this one is basically designed to help cut through resin and a myriad of other materials. I'm actually kind of curious to see what it can do with FDM. It says it can cut through like light plywoods and different things like that, foam board um, and different things like that. So this tool has a huge amount of application in my shop and I'm really excited to get it out of the box and share it with you guys and show you guys because uh, yeah, not only does this channel gonna have work for it, but the, uh, the new model channel will also have work for it. So tell you what, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Let's get this thing jamming. So um, I will warn you guys, if you do intend on purchasing one of these, they are quite expensive. This one is, starts at $250. So all right, we got the after sales warranty card. It looks like an instruction manual here. So we'll dig into that. All right, Sonic Saber. One, two, three, four. Step-by-step -step instructions, operator manual. All right, Your machine is working properly. Blue light, ultrasonic knife is in use. Orange light machine has overheated and has been in use for more than five minutes. Oh. Oh, so the tool will shut itself off after five minutes. Hmm to protect itself. Interesting. So we got a nice pair of working gloves here to keep particulate and stuff out of our hands. Um, I don't know, maybe these also protect our hands from actually getting cut, but we will see. So we'll get them out, give them a feel, get rid of that plastic. So nice, stretchable. So we'll set those off to the side for now until we're ready for them, but let's get to the actual meat and potatoes here. <clears throat> let's get to the tool itself. <laughs> All right, so we've got, looks like some replacement blades. Got the power cord. So got the important thing here, gotta, ha gotta have power. Got to have the power to uh, make this thing work. So we'll get this undone so we can actually, you know, play with it. All right, let me get this plugged into my outlet down here that I still need to put an extension cord on so it reaches up here to the desk. But luckily that cord reaches, so, all right. So here's the cutter itself. Nice little foam block on the, on the blade there. Boy, that blade looks like it could just go through. You don't even need the vibration. That looks like this is just gonna be a, mic is gonna get hurt. And then you got the actual base, machine base itself. Uh, nice, small, compact, good little rubber feeties. We'll undo that and see if we can aim this guy upward a little bit. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Oh, I see what's wrong. Let's get all the cable out of there so I can actually stand this up. <laughs> all right. I feel like this is backwards for some reason. All right. Because it is. That's why. Okay. Nice little joke played on me there. All right. And that's everything out of the box. So we've got the tool itself. We've got cut resistant gloves. We've got a lot of spare blades and we got a box. We'll throw that over there. So just kind of looking at the tool, 
nice, small, um, very compact, very lightweight, adjustable handle. Get some power into it here. Got a red light. What did red light mean? Orange light machine has overheated. That's just a red light. Uh, which is just the power light. Okay. This light over here is the one we care about. So, let's just push the... Push that. Green light. Green light means the machine is ready. It's working properly. So I'll push the button. Blue light. Says the ultrasonic knife is in use. I don't hear anything or see anything happening. Huh. Well, let's do this the right way. I'm going to put on the cut resistant gloves because it says to do so. So we will, we will, we will play its game. And I just happen to have some resin prints that are failures or broken or got defects to play with tonight. So we'll see how this does. So uh, cut resistant gloves. We got the tool itself, which the gloves just make it slippery. I don't know about this. I think I was safer without the gloves and I'm working with resin. This is going to create some resin particulate. So let's just be on the safe side and uh, mask up for a minute. So you can see here, it's got some burrs on the bottom that just didn't come off. So I figured, heck, let's give this a try. So it's a nice figurine of Batgirl. Um, this is made with the E-Sun Tough resin. Um, I do very much enjoy that resin. Uh, it was damaged, one of her spikes came off. So I couldn't really use it. And this has just been sitting in a box. So I figured, why not? Let's see what this thing does. Ugh, these gloves just, I feel like I'm going to hurt myself worse. Oh, wow. And you can see it's just flaying it right off. Very smooth, very simple. Just peeling it right away. That's really cool. I can actually see some heat coming off it too. So basically, I'm just cutting off these little burrs in a matter of seconds with this knife. So basically like joints that aren't fitting right or anything like this, this little guy's gonna cut right through and let you take small slivers off without having to sand it, which is what's awesome. No sanding is a good thing. But basically in a matter of a few moments, I just made that smooth. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, I mean, I'm just picking that off. So really what you're gonna use this a lot for instead of cutting like this, is if that support was still on here, you would use this to cut the support off when it was still in the uh, resin way. But basically, you can see, I'm not applying any pressure really. I am literally just letting the blade move along. But I also see why they want you to wear the cut resistant gloves to just protect yourself. I gotta be careful I'm not running this for more than five minutes too because it'll automatically shut off. But where it's burrs, you can hear it snagging. Where it was burrs, there's no burrs over here anymore. That's really, really neat and it can be very useful. Like here on our cape, there's burrs from the support that this guy is just gonna take right off. Oh, I don't cut myself with it. Let's be smart. Let's cut away from me. I'm learning a new tool. Probably the smart thing to do is cut away from myself. 
This is tough resin that I'm going through. So it's a little, it's harder. But you can see, I'm just moving it along and it's flaying off the burrs all on its own. So even through tough resin, this guy cuts it just like butter. That's really, really neat. That's going to be really, really helpful in the long term as more resin projects start showing up on the table here, which they're going to. They are so going to. Hey, Douglas, how's it going? So the Sonic Saber is already kind of a win with just cleaning off burrs. And you guys can see the change in the color where it's cutting away. And it's just giving me a great straight line with that blade. And let me take that from, I'm going to poke you, to nice and smooth. Cuts it away like butter. And I bet it would do the same to your finger if you weren't careful. So, but with resin prints, and I better stop because I've been using it for more than five minutes. For resin prints, for taking off the support, especially pre-curing, this guy's going to be awesome. I'm going to take this off now because I'm done cutting stuff away. So before you cure, when you take it out of the, and put it through a wash, this guy's just going to go through the resin like crazy. Now this is post-cured, so this is tough stuff, and it's just cutting right through it. I love it. So I'm going to put that back in there, and I'm going to turn this little guy off. The light just went off, so it's done. It's not in use. I'm going to take off these cut-resistant gloves that are going to probably be my friend for a little while until I trust myself. Oh, yeah. This is the Frozen uh, Sonic Ultra. This is their Sonic Saber. So this knife is vibrating and cutting through resin for more precision and gentler cuts on your resin. So this knife is basically meant to really make my life a lot easier and getting supports off on definitely delicate stuff. You can just cut it very quickly. You're not doing the pull game. Um, you're not worried about breaking it off like a Mercy. You know, we've got her wings. I could just easily just cut down the wing with this and boom, I'm done. So that's a, this is tool is going to be so helpful with larger projects that I'm getting ready to start moving into after Ian has paid me a visit here. So, but uh, yeah, Frozen plus Mad Mad Madworks um, make this again. It's a huge price figure of two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, not to mention what you're going to pay for shipping for this thing. Um, and tariffs and all that fun stuff there's there's stuff that goes with it so unfortunately it can be a little bit of expensive but um, for someone like me who is going to be working with resin a bunch basically if I use this before I cured and cut the supports off versus doing the prime method that most people do um, I would not have this at all this would have been just bzzz, smooth so yeah essentially that's exactly what it is and this thing is supposed to be able to cut through your foam um, balsa balsa wood and a ton of other stuff um, after the video is over I'll try to remember to put the link in the description to this so uh, cranky yeah you're right you could go buy yourself a resin printer for the price um, but you've also got people like me who's, ah, my, I wish my resin printers were that cheap. <laughs> um, that's kind of one of those things. And I got this in a combo deal. Um, you guys are going to see the video coming out pretty soon. I have purchased another one of the Sonic Mega 8Ks from Frozen. Um, the first one was just so nice and so easy to use that I bought a second one. So I actually convinced my wife to let me spend a big hunk of money um, to put a second one up in the new print shop. So um, for me, who's pulling off, you know, one, one print with that, if I'm just doing 2.8 figurines, I can print 
50 figurines on that on that bed in one print run so for removing supports quickly and easily and for small delicate models this guy is just going to save me time because i can just be in there and just cutting away um, and not have to worry about snapping it basically because um, we've if you've done resin printing, you know how easy it is to snap a small thin piece and then you're just like either crap, I'm printing another one or okay, here comes a super glue and neither one of them is fun and gets the model looking the way it should coming out of the print. So this little guy is just going to save some time. Is he going to be something that's comp sitting here at my workbench all the time? Probably not. Um, this guy's probably going to go sit up there with the printer. So that way when I'm got the stuff in the tub and I'm got, I've washed it, um, I can sit down, put on the gloves and start cutting away any supports from thin areas. The new print shop is coming along. Um, I know my two big resin printers are up and operational. Um, they're in the network, all that stuff. So they're ready for me to work. I've got two more resin printers that just need some love. Um, so I'm going to get them some love here. Probably, well, it just kind of depends on what Hurricane Ian does. So they're talking the possibility it may just come right over me as a tropical depression. Um, it still may be a cat one when it gets where I'm at. So I don't know yet. I'll know Thursday and Friday, but basically I have decided to hold any prints until after the week, till the weekend, till after the storm has passed and not risk any power outages or anything like that and make sure um, we're in good shape. So kind of just playing it by ear a little bit, but um, I got this tool and I wanted to just kind of bring it on the stream and show it. Um, I did kind of look at other similar products to this on Amazon and some of them I was seeing were like in the $400 price range. So there's definitely, possibly some value here. Um, the only other thing that's kind of a little maybe uncomfortable, maybe uncomfortable for me is the replacement blades. Um, but you can, they've sent tons of blades here and a spare set screw and an Allen wrench to get that out and work on it. So that's pretty awesome to do. So, but, uh, the print shop is coming along. I was working, um, up, I was working up there just before uh, the stream trying to figure out how I'm going to mount my filament sprint spools um, for the printers on the bottom shelf. Um, I was trying to make sure I was able to hook that, basically hook them on the top so they could easily feed down but not get in the way of the print itself. So kind of one of those things, a little bit of engineering is going on. So Cranky, well, welcome to 3D printing. I'm glad to see more people join. The Ender 3 is a great way to cut your teeth in the 3D printing and FDM printing is a really awesome thing to get in with. So um, don't let it discourage you. Small parts, definitely. Um, resin can do all kinds of fun, cool little projects. Um, I mean, that little guy's resin. She's resin. There's a broken Voyager over there that's resin. But even with FDM, you can still do a lot of cool prints. So this is all one piece and it's FDM printed on an Ender of all and on an Ender 3. So you can do some very nice detailed prints on those Ender 3s. So don't let it discourage you unless you're planning on actually going into like miniatures and busts and stuff like that. You can do most of what you want to do probably on the Ender. Especially if you're wanting to do more cosplay and stuff, the Ender 3 is definitely a great place to start. I do plan to do a tour of the print shop once I've got everything put together. That's the booger of the game right there is getting it all put together. Cause I'll put something together and then I'll add or remove something and realize, Oh, this doesn't work all that well. And I'll change it. Um, and then just kind of life goes around. Like I had the trip to Orlando. Um, Hurricane Ian is kind of, I'm still just kind of, instead of actually going ahead and printing, I'm just doing uh, prep. I'm just getting some stuff ready. I'm doing more builds on machines, um, stuff like that, getting everything ready so that I can kind of just start firing up and hopefully doing some fun, cool stuff. But that Sonic Saber though, I mean, the way it just cut those burrs off, 
that's impressive because that's cured tough resin and it just cut it like butter so that's going to be awesome uh i was going to cut on voyager but meh not really feeling cutting it uh, when she probably just needs some super glue so i'm going to set the saber off to the side here now let's go back to one of our projects we've been working on mr maddie cat so you guys can see i got the uh the dark silver onto the guns here it definitely lightened it up i did it on the top window there i'm going to take a small and the missile rack up on the top it just really helped it pop out so we're going to keep going uh, with painting this guy tonight because painting is just fun. Oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. But I'm going to get really into the small brushes tonight. Start really kind of working up those, those lines. So let's kind of clean up a little bit, I guess. Get rid of, get rid of this uh, cut off resin here. Probably should not be using my hands for that, but... Oh well, into the trash it goes. <clears throat> but one of those things too, if you guys are using tools like that, mask up, it's always just safer. Always a safety thing. Always be safe when you 3D print. Don't, don't do something crazy. Um, that's something I talk, in the next couple of videos I talk about is just be safe. Just be safe. Because safety is king. But the new print shop uh, tour, I'm honestly hoping to have it ready for a video here in the next couple weeks. I get this filament figured out how to hang it. Um, the filament and the last of the raspberry pies. Those are the two kickers that I'm uh, working on right now because the Raspberry Pis. <laughs> oh, the Raspberry Pis. <clears throat> I had put post-it notes on all of them on which one was which and what it was what. All the post-it notes fell off. So I am having to figure out what one goes where again. And it's just kind of, or what, what what one is. And since I have a combination of threes and fours, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to make a mess of them, basically. So I'm powering each one on, figuring out what it is, and then uh, getting ready to move it. I may have killed this brush, I don't know yet. Uh, that brush is probably dead. Let's get a different one. I've got plenty. Cranky, that's awesome. Yeah, direct drive can be very helpful. Um, especially if you're wanting to get more like flexibility. Um, like TPU, stuff like that, the direct drive can make those prints very nice to do. Um, I just put a video out like two weeks ago of kind of, if you're just getting started, here's some really handy tools to have around. Um, you may want to go check that video out. That was two weeks ago because this last week I put out a video if you're doing resin. Um, some handy tools to keep around. So might be worth uh, checking out because especially like the no clogger, I love that tool. I need to give it its own video, but I just have not done so yet. Or did I? I can't remember. It's very possible I recorded one and just haven't done anything with it. Uh, <laughs> I've been known to do that. Um, to have something recorded and then just never use it. So, because I'm horrible that way. But uh, it's definitely one of those things, those simple tools can make printing, FDM printing life so much easier. Um, that no clog, I love it with my direct drive printers and my Prusa. Just pull the filament out if I've got a clog and uh, 
pop that guy down there with it heated up and it'll push everything out and usually deals with my clog, which is just awesome. Because clogs suck. Anybody who disagrees with me, well, you're weird. Because clogs suck. I'm just kind of, I'm trying to clean the lines is basically what I'm after right now. So, uh, Cranky, just out of curiosity, what paints did you, uh, did you invest in? Because I use a wide assortment from AK, Proacryl, Citadel, um, Army Painter. They're here somewhere. They're behind me. Um... I kind of subscribe to a field of all of them, especially when someone's already pre-made a color for me and I don't have to try to mix it multiple times. Yeah, cheap resin and bad temperatures can easily get you. Um, if I don't know if you've watched any of the other videos, my go-to good price resin is Inland PLA Plus, purchased from Micro Center. Um, they're usually pretty tried and true to my settings um, on prior videos that I show when I do prints. Um, I haven't done a time lapse in a while, but I haven't printed in a while as part of the problem. Um, but Inland PLA is pretty tried and true, consistent, and does a really good job. So I definitely recommend taking a look at it. You, you do pay a penalty if you go cheap. Um, now, granted, I don't know what you're calling cheap res cheap filament, because um, I use just about everything under the sun with uh, um, sun lu, all that stuff. I don't usually use a lot of overture unless it's a color I'm looking for, but I also don't tend to buy filament for color. I tend to buy filament for um, for quality, because what am I going to do with it? I'm going to paint it, so. I, uh, I usually just get whites and grays, um, tend to be my go-to. Um, gray tends to show up better on video is a lot of the reason why I use the gray. But uh, it's just kind of a personal preference what you're wanting to do. Um, there's no right or wrong filament out there either. So um, it's just, again, what are you trying to do? So. I mean, are you printing for strength, for beauty, color, rainbow? Um, it just kind of depends on what you're after. So, I've never heard of magic fly, but there's nothing wrong with acrylic. That's what I'm painting with right here. Um, acrylic paints work really well. Um, I love acrylic paints. Get you a good jug of distilled water to thin them down with, and a good wet palette, and you can go to town. So, but. I'm definitely kind of curious. Um, if you get a chance, shoot me an email, a link to that magic fly paint. I'm kind of curious. You made me curious. Um, I'm always willing to check out a, a different paint. So and you guys can see, I'm just kind of using the darker brown to clean up, just kind of clean it up, get rid of the, any of the white underlay, um, kind of make this thing look like it's supposed to. So. And, you know, with paint, it's one of those things, there's never a wrong paint. So, um, even if you went with enamels, uh, it just kind of depends on what you're after. Are you after a satin? Are you after a, um, a gloss? Um, and just because if, if a paint's too thick, if it's an acrylic, a little distilled water and thin it down. Um, and you can just keep going with it. So there's no, there's no real bad paint, but I definitely, I use certain paints for certain things. Um, like right now I'm using the AK cause I want that bold, darker brown color for the canopy here for the underlayer anyway. But I like the brown because it comes in with the black to give me a really good, good layer. And it doesn't 
clash with the black too badly. So if I get a little of my brown into my black, it's not too bad. I'm not sure who told you they were wrong, but um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, as long as you have a good primer, you should be able to paint with just about any acrylic. You may have to thin it and work it a bit more, but yeah. Yeah, dried out paint, but even an, an acrylic dried out paint, if you pour enough distilled water in there and let it sit, the paint can come back to life. It might be a little clumpy, but you can bring some dried paints back to life. But what's worse about paints is the, man, is the bottles that the manufacturers think are a good idea. Not saying any names. Um, that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. So y'all saw it, so I don't need to say it. So I'm just going to go over here and whistle for a minute and you guys take your opinion there and have some conversation on that. <laughs> uh, just kind of one of those things. I, I have a kind of an opinion on on those but I love the Citadel colors but I hate the I hate the bottles so yeah the Citadel bottles are are unique so but just about any paint can be made to work but yeah, I'm kind of curious. I've never actually heard of Magic Fly, so I'm gonna have to go look for those. Because I'm actually doing a project, kind of doing some paint comparisons. So that would be a one to add into the topic board. And that's always a good, a win-win for me. So you brought something to the stream, Cranky. I appreciate it. So basically I'm laying down <coughs> a, uh, this darker brown layer and I plan to come back with a steel around the glass to kind of give that the paints rubbed away um, kind of feel to this. So I am kind of going dark but I'm going to come back and light, lighten the, uh, the color with a, with a silver and a steel to kind of give the impression of the metal frame around the glass. So right now, <clears throat> right now I'm just laying down a base layer. So I just want to get this based. I want to get it framed in um, with that base, get rid of the white under layer basically, and then come back with the steel to create a highlight around it. So, that's what I'm doing, or I'm attempting to do anyway, and kind of get the, the glass frames kind of uniform a little bit, because the, uh, yeah. And what brown winds up on the black, well, I got a plan for that, it's called reflection. Cranky, you want help? This is the place to be, this is what we do. So you are welcome anytime I stream or leave a comment in the video if you got a question. So that's the whole point is just, because honestly, that's one thing about the 3D community, 3D printing community that I love and that I hate. There are people out there that will bend over backwards to help you. Um, then there are just the know-it-alls and snarks. And yeah, yeah, so I try to be helpful. Some days you might hit me on a bad day, but you know, uh, all in all, I try to be somewhat useful.
to everybody around me. There are some days I just got to go hide in bed <laughs> and just not face the world. Just kind of depends on what's going on. But I try not to do have that problem all too often. Now, the ultimate goal of mankind, and the only way we're really going to become anything more than a species that lives on a place is to work together. And that's just kind of how the cookie is going to crumble for everything in the end. The better we work together, the more we achieve. The hoarding knowledge just doesn't really help. So, yeah. <clears throat> just going to depend on what you can do. Douglas, thank you. That one was printed for uh, Joe Hudson, uh, Highlander424 over on um, Instagram. Go check him out. Some of his painting is amazing. And he, I, he and I work together on stuff. On uh, He asked me to print, and then I'll print and send him the models. Um, and he does the painting, and he paints a lot of them. So a lot of cool stuff getting ready to come out of Resin Land, I think. Um, stuff he's asked me to print, and then I'll we'll be kind of showing off together. So we're kind of starting to see that that brown of that canopy is really kind of coming into play here. Uh, well, I'm an IT engineer, so helpful is a good thing and can be a, it's a double-edged sword sometimes. So, just kind of depends. So, I try to help wherever I can, though, because, yeah. really kind of excited to get the uh, the base layer on this so that I can start uh, really coming in with some highlights and stuff then probably throw this out there on my Etsy store for sale or something so I'm trying to make sure I get a lot of high quality detail in this one because you know, I want it to be unique And machinery is always always kind of fun. I like machinery better than I like assembling people, painting faces, stuff like that. It drives me insane. So I never feel like I get a, a do a good enough job. Not so sure I'm happy with how dark I took the black, the brown, but you know what? That's the fun thing is I can always lighten her up. Come in with a little bit lighter color. But like I said, just coming in and shaping up the lines really kind of helps clean it up, straighten it out, and uh, just a little bit of love and TLC can go a long way on a print like this. I started kind of trying to figure out how I want to do the diorama for this. Right now I'm not even worried about my brush strokes, so that'll come along later um, with the lighter, the next layer coats. Right now I'm just edging more than I am anything. 
straight lining. Getting stuff kind of just cut in and looking right. Some of it too, I could use silly putty and kind of create these straight lines and just airbrush it, but right now I'm not really wanting to airbrush. I don't have the camera set up for the airbrush, so. Oh, then you're ahead of the game on me on that cranky because uh, AutoCAD is still something I am always learning something new in. So, always learning. I just realized I'm doing all this without my glasses. That's not overly smart of me right now, but whatever. Yeah, AutoCAD, I'm, I'm definitely getting into it, especially now that I'm doing stuff with a uh, 3D scanner, and different things like that. I'm definitely having to pick up more on the skill set. Um, kind of difficult to pick what I want to do because I'm trying to also earn some certificates for work stuff like that as well so it's kind of kind of being a bear at the moment but I'm working on through it and kind of one of those things just so you guys know that if you're even if you're coming back and watching the stream later the mad cat I'm only gonna work on this on stream I'm not gonna work on this off stream unless there's just some crazy tediousness um, that's going to take hours that I know will get boring to watch. Um, so this thing's going to take life here only. At least this one. I've got a smaller one, but he probably won't be painted on stream. I doubt you guys want to see me paint two of these. But basically just trying to line some of it in, get some of the contour panels going, straighten up the lines because there's like these where I haven't straight, they're not straight. You may not be able to see them on camera, but I see them and it drives me insane. So I'm just kind of going through, letting the paint flow and kind of just straightening the lines out. Especially when I start adding in the silvers, the grays, the rust, you know, this will definitely kind of start getting kind of a nastier look to it, which will help out tremendously. But the trick with acrylic is just don't go on overly heavy. Go on light, go on thin, and just coat it. And right now I'm so just in, I'm just starting this one. Mistakes are fine. Cause what's the key, the one key thing I can teach anybody about painting is the model is done when you feel it is done. Some people are just too perfectionate and can't finish a model because, oh, well this needs to change or, this needs to change. Uh, guys, just 
let the paint flow. Let it flow. If you are, because who cares what other people think about it? Are you happy with it? If you're happy, you're done. You did, you, you've achieved your goal. So, now do I have models that I'm not happy with? Oh, all the time, and I just keep painting. Uh, <laughs> but that's also why I have an ultrasonic cleaner, is I can throw it in there with some LA Totally Awesome, and it will usually strip off the acrylic paint really, really well, with a maybe a little bit of help from a toothbrush, depending on how crazy I got with it and I'm starting the model over fresh. So, and I take what I learned from the first time around and I keep going. So, as long as you're willing to try and try again, there is no fail in this world, in this, in this realm. The only fail of a paint is just quitting because you're unhappy with it. That's the only time you truly fail when you're painting. So that is the only fail I can give you. I hope my wisdom is sage and useful. Um, I know some people are like, oh, that's poppy cocky, but you know, that's fine. That's your opinion. I have mine. Come in with some gray green here and try something out. All right. While I wait for that others to dry, I kind of want to start going in. This is a AK gray green I'm going in with. Kind of start going underneath the machinery here. You know, the parts that would be grayish, metallic-ish, I'm going to kind of start highlighting out. Get some more color onto the palette. Like these intakes. Nothing wrong with a good gray. And AK gray-green is always usually pretty good when it comes to military models. Kind of one of those things, I always kind of like to make up a story about a model as I'm painting it. You know, maybe this is, uh, a reclaimed mech that had its pilot killed in combat or some craziness like that. But I'm going to kind of try to get this gray green into the slats here. Cause what I may do is mix in some white to kind of, I got way too much paint in there, but that's okay. I'll use the brush and I'll pull the paint out to fill other areas. Kind of just depends on the lore that you're going with too. What genre you're painting in, stuff like that. If I'm painting Star Trek, you know, am I actually painting an official Enterprise or is this just a ship that I can make the lore up myself that, you know, kind of did one of those things. It all just kind of depends on what you're working on, how you're working on it, what all's on your mind. I got brown all over my hand. <laughs> oh, as long as I don't get it all over the model. It's acrylic, it washes off. A lot of times too, I'll go try to paint along the, uh, the layer lines 
I kind of try to use the layer lines to my advantage when I paint. So what else is everybody working on? Anybody got some fun prints going on or anything like that? Yeah, you got a picture of the model in your head. So, and that one of the things that is kind of important about picturing it in your head is the picture can change. And you know what? That's okay. The picture can change and so can the creativity. And it makes you kind of push beyond your limits, which is awesomeness. I'm just glad to start seeing some of this white disappear off this. And panel lines start looking closer together, different things like that. It really does kind of help a model come along. It gives a really good seam line. Oh, that's awesome, Cranky. Battleships are fun. Um, one of the ones I'm, I just started clipping and kind of dry fitting together is the Battleship Alabama. So, which will be coming soon to the model channel. Um, but it's always fun to bring something to life in your head. And it's kind of the fun part is once you get these base layers laid down, then you can start giving the accent, give it the life. Um, that can be really cool to a model. That really kind of just makes it unique. Yeah, you can definitely tell that green kind of, the greenish gray kind of gives it a little bit of life and then kind of with the black silver and different things like that. With that, I'm going to come in with just some light steel to make those, each of those holes kind of pop, missile pods kind of pop a little bit out. Um, that will kind of help that one give it, definitely give it some life. Um, like around this brown panel that I painted earlier, I plan to come in with the greenish gray to make that dark brown just kind of pop and this is just one gray there's going to be a lot <laughs> with a mech like this grays are all over the place because it's it's a moving machine um, so basically this is the first of many grays that we will be uh, incorporating into this model But basically all I'm doing is cleaning up panel lines and getting that white to disappear. That's all I've worked on tonight. And I've been working, I've been painting on this for what, 20, 30 minutes? 
Doesn't look like I've gotten very far, does it? That's the bane of big models. They can take weeks. They can take months. But when you finish it, it's so worth it. Because it can just make things, it just makes it fun. And then when you see somebody that just has a genuine interest in something you did, it just, ah, oh, so worth it. So worth it. That green, like I said, between the four tones, you're going to start seeing a lot more definition when I come back in. Yeah, that's the fun of the 3D printing is you get your models in extremely high detail. Um, I haven't printed any battleships. I've just been doing the model kits with the battleships, but... Uh, Cause I've got some of the Iowa class one sitting out there and stuff like that. Um, that definitely I need to kind of take my time and start working in. Um, cause they're sitting out there and they totally deserve to be painted cause it's an Iowa class battleship. Um, cause I'm a Missouri boy and we've got an Iowa class battleship. Uh, <laughs> um, I've always kind of thought the Iowa class was, Really a nice looking battleship. So I've got a model of the Missouri and the New Jersey sitting out there that need need love. Um, that'll be after I do the Alabama. And then uh, I've got Space Battleship Yamato that needs, I've got a kit of it that needs put together and just kind of a, a spattering of stuff I just need to really start working on. But as I am getting closer to completing our move and getting stuff unpacked, especially once the print shop is fully assembled, oh man, once the print shop is fully assembled, <laughs> we're gonna start making stuff. Um, we're going to have more than what we know what to do with. So. But that's the fun of it all. So tell you what, and especially the people watching the stream afterward, what are we going to name this mad cat? What name is this wonderful Matt going to have? Looking for suggestions. As we paint this in in the streams. Uh, Jacob, I don't have a video out there of me making this one. So, um, I need to print another one to make said video. I just have not done so.
I will say this is probably the most progress I've made on it. Well, MadCat is the, the model of machine. So it's the type of uh, mech that I have in my hand. So, but you know, I'm kind of thinking like the B-17s, you know, they had the nose art. Is there one that would be interesting nose art for this one? You know, kind of building that story and letting you guys help me build it. Because there's definitely plenty of room there for nose art. So... And uh, Jacob, if you're looking for these models, a lot of times they're out on uh, Cult 3D for the Mad Cats. Uh, usually that's where I find the Mech Warrior models most of the time is out on Cults. So if you're just, just out of curiosity, but unfortunately I don't have a time lapse of this one. Been meaning to, to get one, but just haven't, uh, haven't had a chance to print it again. But basically on the build plate, he sat like this and built up. So. But as I go through and I clean these lines and stuff like that, uh, um, I'm either going to use it to make a stencil or I'm going to use it to make the nose art, Doug. Uh, I haven't decided. Depend as small as this is, I may just use it to make the nose art. So, um, especially like the name, I probably will use the cricket. Uh, just kind of depends on what we decide and I can always go see what I've got out there uh, um, See what I've got out there from old model kits too, from old B-17 model kits that we could use and stuff like that, so There's all kinds of stuff out there But again, like I said earlier in the stream, I am only going to paint this in stream, so um, unless there's just something that is ridiculous that requires me to take a ton of time, which even then I may still just do it in stream, uh, cause I'm going to wind up spending the time anyway doing it. Um, it just kind of depends. But just coming through with these base layers, you guys can see the lines are really starting to kind of trim up to kind of give the model more of life uh, than that white, than that base prime and linothal uh, ink layer. So we're getting kind of base definition thanks to the colors and kind of seeing what life this model has. So I am just using acrylics. Really, it's the only time I'll use enamel is if I'm like dirt making a model look dirty. Then I may use an enamel wash and come in and but an enamel wash and a 3D print don't always play well, depending on how your sand job and how bad your layer lines are. Um, so sometimes I just avoid washes and go a different way with the Vallejo dinging and stuff like that, so. Oh, going fast in 3D printing, that's a dangerous thing. But that's kind of one of those things, I lose patience, so what did I do? I just bought more printers. Uh, <laughs> 
print all of the things. So that's always kind of the fun of it all. But we'll definitely be seeing a lot of resin prints coming soon. Um, I'm waiting for Hurricane Ian to pass over me. Um, once that's passed over, which will be, it's supposed to hit my area Thursday and Friday. So once that goes by, then the printers get to, and you know, power's on and stable and stuff like that. The printers are really going to start going to town. So like I said, I'm just kind of coming in with the base coat with this green gray. So just kind of giving a good base coat, giving a good underworking. I'm definitely going to be lightening up the canopy. It's a lot darker than what I thought it would be. Um, and kind of making this work, work a little bit in a more happy way. We're going to have a happy killer robot. Anybody? <laughs> uh, it is good to be painting again. I missed this. One of the things during the moves I missed was uh, just getting to pull up a chair and paint on a model. So really did miss it. And of course, guys, you see me willy nilly pouring out paint. That's because this is a wet palette. I put the lid on and the paint's good for over seven days. So it comes in really handy. So looked at it talked about it not for what i would need to power the print farm is not a cost effective solution right now so the smarter move for me is um, i do have my printers on battery backups on ups units and usually what i can do is i have enough time to run up there and stop the print, pause them, which will let the printers go kind of into a standby mode and allow the, usually when, if they're powered on and in standby, the battery backups will give me about four or five hours. Now, why am I not? So like my frozen mega sonic eight Ks, those take two bottles, two kilograms of resin to fill that vat bay. And one bottle is 50 bucks. So to fill that vat bay and get started is $100. Just right out the gate. Just to fill it. So I'm not overly keen on losing a print midway through on a, with $100 worth of resin, <laughs> liquid resin sitting in the machine. So that's why I've decided to hold till after um, Ian blows by. And, you know, it's one of those things I can just kind of stop as I need to. Um, a lot of times I get pretty good um, estimates of time. So I'll kind of kind of watch stuff as they come together to uh, make sure I'm trying to avoid a power outage as much as possible. So but right now, you know, like solar, it just... With everything we just spent on the house going and trying to put in a solar system is just the, my problem was the return on investment. So, cause while solar sounds fantastic and everything, the return on the investment would still be 10 or 12 years away until um, I recoup the entire initial investment. And by then, you know, it may not be, it, it just doesn't, financially right now, it doesn't make sense. What the smarter move is, is just to watch, pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, unfortunately right now, do I, would I love solar? Oh yes. Don't get me wrong. I would love solar, but, uh, right now it's just not, not feasible. So... Oh, what time is it? All right. We got a little bit of time left in the stream, but it won't be long and I'll have to end the stream. So you guys got any questions? Um, I know cranky. I'm going to go look for that. Was it magic fly paint? 
<coughs> um, I'm going to go take a look for that and see what a couple bottles cost. Maybe get some in here and do some paint comparisons on the, uh, the uh, model painting channel that's getting ready to get its first few videos over there finally. That's a project I've been wanting to do for a while because I want to separate working on my war hammer and all that kind of stuff into its own thing. But this guy is slowly taking shape. When it comes to the final camo too, I probably will silly putty the model and uh, come in and uh, come in with the airbrush and do the final the final layer the final layers don't copyright me da -da -da -da. <laughs> but yeah um, solar was a discussion so it's a good point though Doug I mean having the Tesla battery backups and all that stuff uh, makes sense um, I probably could get a pretty hefty sized generator during the storms and rotate them, rotate the battery backups to charge them back up and keep them going. But like for the filament printers, losing a big print while it sucks is not as expensive as losing one of these big resin prints. So, and sometimes as Elsa says it, you just gotta let it go. It's sad, but true. I'm starting to kind of lose my control a little bit, I'm noticing. Not getting my lines as straight. Starting to get a shake in my hand, which probably means I need a candy bar. <laughs> but you guys can tell adding in the gray, more of the dark brown, tightening up the dark brown in with the blacks to create, get rid of the online, the lines. So we're definitely, we're moving forward with it, which is what we want. Forward motion is good motion. Unless you meant to go in reverse, then I don't know what to tell you. Terrible dad joke right there. But we're definitely getting some forward motion, getting in the greens, getting in the darker browns, trimming the lines up a little bit is also kind of paying off a little bit, I think. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Because I hate to say it, it is getting really late in my time zone. And it is getting about time to end the stream tonight. So, oh man, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, trying to figure out what fun things I'm going to bring you next week. It may just be painting on the Mad Cat. <laughs> Which, nothing wrong with that either. So, let my brushes dry, my distilled water, close up, close up my little paint tray here. So, but I appreciate everybody for showing up to the stream tonight. It is always appreciated. Everybody that hung in there and watched this, watched my craziness. Um, if you can, go out and hit that like button because that helps us out and gets the stream promoted to more people and definitely lets more see it out there. Also, you know, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us as we are doing a live stream every Tuesday at 8.15 EST. Um, and a new video comes out every Friday. And I just happen to know for this week and the next two weeks, you're definitely getting a video because I've already made them and uploaded them. So um, lots of fun stuff to come. A lot of focus here lately in resin printing, but that's because I'm still trying to put my filament printers back together so 
uh, definitely stick around. And as always, if you want to help out the channel, go over and on the Patreon and subscribe. Well, Cranky, if you think of that name, throw it in the comments of the video or bring it to us next week, man. I appreciate everybody, and we will see you guys in the next stream.